we're here to answer your game gaming or game night questions. So due to the fact we're reviewing a new role playing game tonight later in the show, I thought it would be worth diving into our question pile, specifically looking for RPG related questions. So the kind of the overall theme of the show would be role playing based content instead of board game content. So when doing this, um, we did have a few questions. We definitely get more board game ones. So feel free if you got RPG questions, send the questions at tabletopbellhop.com. But it, looking through the list, I did find three different questions that were basically all asking the same thing, which I would summarize as, what should you do when someone can't make it for a game session? I gotta say, this seemed like a pretty solid topic. And I know we've kind of skirted around this. It, it's stuff that's come up before. We've discussed it during previous AMAs. What do you do when someone doesn't show up for a Gloomhaven game, which is kind of mish, a mishmash. And we've answered very specific questions. And I know we've also touched upon it in other topics like dealing with problem players where we actually talked about abs like chronic absenteeism. But what we've never done is specifically just talked about absenteeism and what to do. We've never actually deep dived what to do with absent players. So I thought it would be a good topic for tonight. So. Well, personally, I thought this was easy. You strip their character of all items and leave them staked out for the birds to feast on. Oh, wait, you mean they're just taking a break and they're coming back to the game? Sorry. Sorry. That's uh <laughs> honestly i think that'd be a totally different of what to do when someone leaves your game which is, is something else we could get into and, and i probably still don't suggest sean's method unless <laughs> they, they they left on very unfavorable circumstances so what i do want to point out though is um before we dive into what to do when someone can't make it i want to start off by saying something i personally think is very important and more people need to take heed to is that it's okay to miss a game night. We're all adults, or even if we're kids, we all have things we have to do. We all have things that come up. We all have obligations. We have family, we have friends. Getting together with other people to play a game is a hobby, it's a pastime, it's a luxury, it's something we are doing for fun. And it should be treated as that. Yes, I realized back in the day, game night was the be all end all. And if you didn't make it to game night, you were betraying everyone. Well, that needs to go out the window like some of those other old Ron Narg ideas. It is not the end of the world if someone misses a game night. Similarly, if you do need to miss a game night, do it. Like, don't feel totally obligated, but do it responsibly. Don't just throw it out the window, but realize personal health, well-being, you don't have enough spoons, you have to deal with your kids, you have to work, all of it are valid reasons to miss a game night. In fact, some people should probably miss more game nights mm. than they do. While we have talked on other episodes about obligations in when you agree to play with a group, yes, you do have a larger life. And as Mo just said, thinking about your physical and mental health, as well as your relationship healths. Yes. These are important to you as well and should not necessarily go by the wayside just because you said, I'm supposed to play a game every Wednesday night, period. Yes. And and please don't do the tried, tired, oh, the spouse hates it, it's game night, I don't want, you know, don't. All that should be long gone. It's 2022, people. So it does lead me to my first suggestion on what you should do when someone misses or, well, rather what you shouldn't do. Don't punish people for not showing up. Now, this is especially true for valid reasons, what we just talked about, but even invalid reasons, even if you just got sloughed off or ghosted, don't punish someone in a game for something that happened outside of the game. This should be talked about outside of the game it shouldn't be part of the ongoing um group dynamic it shouldn't be something that involves everyone if absenteeism becomes an ongoing issue this is a group problem and should be taken care of outside of the game where you're gonna do the adult thing and have a conversation this might mean having a session 0.1 1.5 whatever you want to call it where you get everyone together and discuss it it might be a matter of talking to the person and give the person an out. Like, don't be confrontational. Don't you miss too many sessions? We're kicking you out of the group is not the right way to handle this. It's the you know what? You haven't been able to make it to the last things. First of all, I, I, 
are you still interested in coming? Like, if you're not having a good time and you want to back out, you have other things to do, feel free. Did you meet someone new and you have more interesting things to do? We get it. We all have lives. If you'd like, we can do that. Or how about you only show up every other week? Like, talk it out. Um, we're not going to go through all the possible different solutions here. That's not what the main topic is tonight. But handle it outside the game. Coming up with a, well, if you don't show up, you're not going to get XP. Or and then when the person's not there, give out all the magic items or any of that other literally passive aggressive don't do that yeah when talking about commitment yeah well, something we talk about here all the time again is that setting expectations mm -hmm. whether it's a session zero or a session 1.5 or whatever helping curbing attendance issues that aren't necessarily what you might consider valid you know there aren't that that isn't because someone just doesn't have the spoons to play or you know can't can't make it one day uh making sure you've set those expectations, not only just of where and how often you're going to be playing, but how to cancel. You know, if, if even if someone has to cancel at the very last minute, that's okay. But if there's any notice that you can give the group, mm -hmm. that's going to go over better. And that's going to make everyone feel better about things. And, and part of that's all this is, is just making the group okay with things and understanding you know, if you're canceling as everyone is driving to the event, that's different than if you yes. realize that something has been scheduled and is going to conflict and a day in advance or even two hours in advance, you're calling and letting everyone know. Like I would even suggest further, like as your session zero, um, perhaps in your 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 group, I'm drawing a blank on the term social contract whether it's written or not, written or unwritten social contract. And yes, written social contracts are a thing and more and more people are using them. You should note that like you want a week's notice. And if you don't get a week's notice and, and have a plan, because that way, if you have a week's notice, you know, we're going to plan to do something else and have a contingency for when that happens. And then maybe even have a different contingency when it's a last minute cancellation and what's acceptable reasons to not show up, which again, almost everything should be an acceptable reason not to show up. And like if even I don't feel like playing today should be a valid reason. You're it's it's supposed to be fun. The whole point of gaming is to get together with other people and have fun together. And what everyone should have learned by now, and you see reiterated over and over again in modern gaming, is it's all about everyone at the table having fun, not just one person or the majority of people, but everyone having fun. And if just one person isn't gonna have fun, you shouldn't probably be gaming that night. No, yep, absolutely. Uh, it's just one of those things where you need to be communicating uh, and, and communicating up front to let no expectations, but then communicating all the way along and continuing the communications uh, throughout and between games. Mm -hmm. So enough about that. Let's get to do with uh, what to do when someone isn't there, when, when someone or multiple people are missing um, and, and what you what to do that game night, right? At this point, who cares if it was valid or not? Now, again, we will reiterate, these should be planned ahead. This shouldn't be a surprise. Everyone showing up should know which of these suggestions we're gonna talk about, you're going to do, and have an established pattern, especially if you know there's gonna be people who miss all the time. Now, like say people who work shift work, you get a regular schedule, but then maybe you have someone who has a newborn child or even a toddler or whatever, a, a new high schooler who's just starting a new semester, any of those reasons, um, you should have an established plan or possibly multiples. Uh, with my own group, there were different things, depending on different how many people canceled, when they canceled, how far ahead they canceled, all led to different outcomes. So the first suggestion is probably the easiest, um, but not necessarily the best, and that is to play something else. This is what my group did. We had a particular set of, well, actually, I don't even know how many people are in my last RPG game, but it was like six core group. But then we added a couple people a couple times, probably a max of like eight people. But our rule was if we had four players and me, so five showed up, we played. No matter who happened to be there, we played that game, which at the time was Warhammer 3rd Edition, which then moved on to um, Star Wars Edge of the Empire. The rule was, though, if four people showed up, we played. And otherwise, we played something else. Now, for us, that was board games. As well, I, you probably listen to this podcast, you know who we are, and we talk a lot about board games, and I have a significant board game collection, and most of the people I played with RPGs with, see, all the people I play RPGs with were just as much board game players. So they had no problem playing board games. 
Now, it doesn't also have to be the same, like like something else doesn't have to mean a different type of game either. You could always play another role-playing game as well. Um, though playing another game sometimes gets into that risk of the other game being more popular than the first game, which honestly has happened to me a couple times. Um, even worse is when the uh, the players still like the original RPG, but as the DM, I'm all about the new hotness, and I kind of want to play the new one, and then I lose interest in the other one. And anyway, someone can't make it. Don't worry about fixing the campaign or trying to deal without the, the main heroine or the person with the, the keys isn't there. What any of the other problems that can come up when someone's missing a role-playing game? Just play something else. Get back to your regular game as soon as possible. Yeah, and this is uh, especially, uh, there's a whole lot of different uh, options here. And again, we get back to you know session zero, but you know everyone may be board game players. You know, everyone everyone who hangs out with Mo is generally a board game player. Yeah. That's, that's who he connects with. But they may not all be heavy Euro players. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them may really only like, you know, family, uh, family weight party games. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you need to have some expectations set as to whether or not you're going to be pulling out food chain magnet or, you know, something a little on the lighter side. Of, yep. of things now the next option is just the complete opposite so i put these in this order because you got one end and the other end and then we'll talk about some stuff in the middle play without them uh like i said we played if we my group if i had four us four players showed up we played uh which worked right we that way we got to play the campaign continued i happen to be running established published modules so we were working through the published books players with characters would advance the story would line would advance and the other players just missed out on having the fun of being at the game and missed some of the story but not enough like like we we would never have a world shattering event happen in a game that someone's missing from now, of course, this leads to lots of problems in role-playing games, especially if you are one of those gamers who, um, to go back to an earlier comment, are, are funds, fans of the verisimilitude in the, the, the crunch and the champion-style games and the simulation-style RPGs where you want it to feel like a living world, you're going to have a problem. If that's your group, you probably don't want to play without them. You probably only want to run when your full group's there. Personally, I think most RPG groups nowadays have moved away from that simulationist feel and aren't about trying to recreate a fantasy world, but more about howling a story in a fantasy world. But I do know there are groups out there. I know a group that still plays Role Master regularly and literally will not play if a character's missing because to them that breaks the immersion. So to each their own. Um, but if you don't have that, you got to figure out what happened to their characters. At least come up with some excuse. And and this this can really different uh, vary on whether or not you're playing you know printed and and published manuals or if you've got your own sandbox mm -hmm. world. If you're playing a sandbox world, then they went to visit their mom or they've gone mm -hmm. off on a pilgrimage for their priest or you know there's a million different things that don't necessarily impact the game world, but yes. just means they don't happen to be there that day and it's not a problem at all. Whereas if you're playing an established adventure and you've all just made it into the dragon's lair, explaining why Bob suddenly mm -hmm. isn't there in the next room is a little more problematic. <laughs> so I'm going to pull out some of my own tricks from my own, my own DMs hat of tricks or bag of tricks that I have done. So the first one I was running fourth ed D and D please don't at me about fourth ed D and D. Cause I'll just at you back with it being an awesome system. Um, and we had players who were playing, who were on shift work at the time I worked in the auto industry. And so did many of my players and it ended up that we were playing every two weeks, but then I got off shift work. So I wanted to run the game every week and I had a new player join because they happened to be on the other shift. And while what was happening was this one two player would swap. Like, like Mike was there two weeks and Dan was there the other two weeks. So I came up with a solution. Mike and Dan's character were schizophrenic and they were the same character. So every two weeks, they'd swap who was controlling the character. And I actually went so far to go that, you know what, it's D&D, &D, it's fantasy. They like changed classes and everything. So that way everyone got their own player, character. And that honestly, for that solution worked really well. And please know I was not trying to make fun of mental illness. And back then I didn't even realize that was something I should be concerned about. It's something I now am more aware of that maybe I shouldn't just casually toss schizophrenia in my game. 
But at the time, I wasn't aware of that, but we all learn and grow. Another solution I've had was we were playing, again, 4th Ed D&D, but this was a later, we were playing the um, Thunderspire Labyrinth adventure at the time, and things got a little messy in a couple of my gamers' lives, uh, a couple of the players' lives. So what we did is, in that adventure, the shadow fell in the fail wild were starting to encroach on reality. So what we said was any time a player couldn't show up, they slipped through a portal, they slipped through the cracks and were in the other world. And then what we did in that game was what they had to do as, and again, I'm slightly punishing them, but I think it was in a fun way, was they were responsible when they came back to tell us what happened to their character and how they earned the same amount of XP as everyone else which they didn't have to tell me exactly what monsters they killed, but they had to give me some kind of story on the adventure they went on. And then they got the same XP as everyone else who played. And, because, that's, and while what, that's a little bit of a stretch maybe for some D&D groups, I think in a lot of modern, especially narrative groups, that's something that people will yeah. actually in, in want. You know, I can't yes. be here this week, so I'm going to work on a killer story. You better see the story yep, I'm going to have exactly. when I get back next week. Uh, because that's part of the narrative style is having yes. these good stories. And, and honestly, I, I wouldn't have punished someone if they showed up without a story, and you shouldn't as well. But it's the encouragement, right? A little bit of encouragement, a little bit of a carrot to, hey, tell me a story. And yes, yeah, some people came back with fantastic stories. We even had a player show up with a bronze statue of the elf she met that she sculpted well in the Feywild and now had a love interest. And she brought the statue her her character had sculpted, which, no, she didn't personally sculpt it. She found it at Value Village, but like showed up with props. It was pretty awesome. So that those are my favorite ways is honestly to find an excuse for the characters not to be there. And as Sean said, modern narrative gaming, you don't have to make up the excuse. Make the player give you an excuse. Why wasn't your character here last week? That, that is the, the improv style of gaming that, that many of us now prefer. And that is actually my, my biggest recommendation is if a player can't make it when they show up with their character, their first thing they have to do is tell you, where were they? What were you doing? Now, one thing that's interesting is uh, again, a big difference between your d d style games, your crunchy games versus your PBTA style games and things is XP. Mm-hmm. Now, we talk about not punishing people for XP. So in a D&D game, if the group got 500 XP, give 500 XP to the missing player. Yeah. Not a big deal. It's a little weirder in PBTA, whereas the yeah. only time you get experience is when you fail your rolls. And to be fair, it's not all that big a deal. I mean, yeah. there are often times where if your dice are working for you or you haven't really uh you know you had an off week and you weren't contributing quite as much you didn't make as many rolls you just didn't get any xp that Mm -hmm. week and and that's not a bad thing uh so unless there's unless someone is regularly missing things they've got a schedule where again you know if they're if they're off two weeks on two weeks that might you might want to give them some potential uh at that point but in a lot mm-hmm. of these narrative games, it's not a punishment if they don't get that same mm-hmm. level of XP as they would in a crunchier game. And I will admit, um, not that it's my system, but D&D 5e has even moved away from the our XP system that the rest of us grew up with. It's much more story based. But again, give them the story base as well, right? Like just yeah. because they weren't there when you got to the peak of Lonely Mountain. Give them the XP for getting to the peak of Lonely Mountain. You, especially, um, well, especially with D&D, one of the other big things is party balance. Um, yeah. You don't want to suddenly imbalance your whole party, especially when they're working, you know, working in a combat situation as a team. Yeah. You don't want to ha- have the, you know, all of a sudden your tank is two levels behind everyone else and combats are getting thrown off as a result mm-hmm. where you don't get that issue in most, uh, in a lot of your, uh, your less crunchy systems. And another thing you can do, and this is something for, especially for stickler, like the people who are, I need to earn my XP telling a story doesn't earn it. Trust me. I know a player like that. I have one. Um, I haven't been a while since I played with them, but one of the other options you can do is maybe run a one shot for the player or if two players mix, do a little buddy cop thing off on the side <laughs> and give them a way to, to earn that XP or, or do some other way, whether it's tell a story, do some extra, some extra work, give me some background or you could even do like a um, like a flashback scene is another way to do it where instead of playing their main character you give them a little side scene to to again flashback while they were doing this let's play through where you were now that generally works back if you can you know get the player to show up early 
or after, or maybe run something through like Discord, play by forum, or uh, even through uh, Zoom or something like that, just to get the person the XP they're missing. Now, again, that's uh, not for me. I probably wouldn't go that far. I don't care that much. I, <laughs> um, but if that's what your group's like, if that's what you're all about, earning every XP. And while we're saying D and D isn't about this, so there's lots of people out there playing O D and D still, and playing, you know, the White Hack and. Um, What's a old school essentials and those games are all about that. But those games are also designed to run a party that when you die, you come back to first level and rejoin the party. So they're designed to have unbalanced parties. So I don't think it's as big a deal. The big thing, you just don't want it to be punished. You don't want someone to feel like they missed out on more than just the session. Missing out on the game session should be enough of a penalty instead of then punishing them in game. Again, you don't want to punish someone for something that happens out of game in game. This is not just true for absenteeism, but again, we're not going to get into problem players here. Well, and the other issue is, and again, with uh, specifically with the more modern games, you don't want to punish the other people at the table. So again, if you've got that fighter who's had to miss a bunch of games and is all of a sudden, again, your tank is two levels below everyone else, that's punishing the rest of the team because you're no longer able to fight mm -hmm. in that same method. And what that's going to encourage is for less people to take the opportunity to step away, even if they yeah. might need to. And you do not want to discourage that. If people need the time to take their time off, let them take the time off and don't make it uh, punishing for them so that they are scared to step away because, oh my God, the rest of the, mm -hmm. the, rest of the team is going to hate me if I do that. Yeah. Like there's a reason that my Warhammer game went for three years and why I never got <laughs> the edge of the empire really running like I, I, my group of players were all adults that had things going on in their lives myself included i obviously have some health issues like there were many reasons why we missed so next suggestion this again we're going from the middle from between between um just go play something else but don't play what you're supposed to be playing to play so this is play play the same game but don't play your core adventure play through a side plot or a side quest or do a flashback or do a shopping adventure or do some other in-game thing that's using your characters that adds to the game world and adds to the story, but doesn't progress the main plot. And I'm pretty sure in today's day and age, everyone's played enough video games that even if you're not familiar with RPGs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have wasted many, many hours in games like Horizon Zero Dawn not progressing the main plot. It doesn't always have to be marching forward. Yeah, that, that cat with a spotlight on it is telling you that something's going to happen if you go check out that cat. Well, maybe this, that's what you do on the time when, uh, when someone's not there. Actually, you know. that's a good thing I hadn't thought of. Remember two sessions ago when there was that branching path or there was that time we didn't help out Farmer Miller with his sick goat because we were too busy with the orcs? Maybe now is the time to go back to town and help out Farmer Miller go check out that side path. And and it's this is especially valid if you've got, you know, something that you were talking about earlier, where you've got the people who can't show up uh regularely. So you've got people mm -hmm. who, who are who are uh your or groups of people who are who are on different schedules, you know, hey, maybe team A didn't care about farmer um, Herschel's problems, but team C was really thinking about it. And you know what, before we move on to that next thing, we are going to go back and help out farmer Herschel. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when, when whoever gets back from their, uh, you know, trip down South uh, down the river, then we can go back to trying to find the dragon or whatever. <laughs> now to take this a step further, and this is something I wish I had even known about as a thing. I think I first heard it in one of the Robin Laws' books as a suggestion, is to play other people in the same game. Put your characters aside for the one session, then maybe play your favorite NPCs. Your characters have hirelings that have been traveling along with them. You know how much fun you could have where everyone takes on the role of one of those hirelings and all you play out is a night at the inn where they're bitching about the party they're working with? You're going to have a great time with that. Or here's the Robin Laws one that I thought was utterly brilliant is give the players control of the main villains for a group and have them plot against their own characters. You would be amazed just how evil people can be to their own characters. Plus, you get something that's very rare in role playing games, but is very popular in pretty much every other form of medium, which is dramatic irony. That's when the people watching and taking part know something the characters don't 
which is not something most RPG players are used to, though people are getting more used to it. But like being able to know that the bad guy plotted this thing ahead because you plotted it is a fantastic experience to play through that. Uh, another option is play another adventuring party in mm-hmm. the same city or region. Uh, you know, Team A went off to check out the dungeon. Team B suddenly comes into town and can make real and definite changes mm-hmm. to that world or city or area that when they move on again, then the other team comes back and all of a sudden things have changed in their city. And why? Maybe maybe your favorite barkeep has got a new favorite patron and they're wishing mm-hmm. they'd come back and this these guys are, 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 you know, aren't paying up as much. You know, the other team tipped better. <laughs> or the other team comes in and raided the town because just recently there was a huge influx of gold. Mm-hmm. We're not sure where it came from, but all of a sudden the prices went up. Or play the shopkeeps for a week. There you go. There's so many options. There's so many people in the world of your game, yes. especially if you're playing Sandbox. But even if you're not playing Sandbox, oh. your world is populous and the more real that population feels the more interesting the game is Mm -hmm. in both on both sides of the fence. Yep. And to tie this into a topic we talked about two, three weeks ago about using board games with role-playing games. Maybe this is a chance to play something outside your game, but the impacts your main game, whether that's an, a, a, a mighty empires, sprawling armies, moving on a map thing, which you then throw into the world events going around the characters or it's just a matter of what's another example playing through a sci-fi 4x game to determine who the new galactic emperor is and while the characters were off fighting the evil alien race they get back and ends up there's a new emperor and someone new in charge um possibly controlled by one of the player characters uh there's some lots of interesting ways you could tie other games in to affect your rpg so even if you do just decide to have board game night you might be able to way, find a way to have that impact your game world. Absolutely. And there's so many ways to do this. And I mean, it could be as simple as playing a game that is in no way related to your game, but you, you know, play some bets on, on outcomes for, for, for your game. You know, you're playing a cart, you're playing some sort of card game, trick-taking game, and you're, but you're playing it as the players mm-hmm. so that the, the outcome, yeah, as the characters, so the outcome has perhaps financial impact oh, yeah. inside the game. You know, there's lots of ways to play that out. Play, it, play a game of Red Dragon in, but use your character's gold. <laughs> there you go. Now, another thing you can do is world building. The, it, now, uh, this is broad, and I'm not going to get into all the different ways you can do world building, but play your game but don't play your characters don't role play that week instead do whatever generate npcs though those hirelings give them names and backstories the town you're in everyone defines two buildings or even do um um what do you call pre-planning the stupid buzzword is jumping out of my head you're planning ahead for something that may or may not happen in the future you're being proactive mm-hmm. be proactive and just build a bunch of towns and interesting places that could be found in towns. Every player sits down, you grab an index card, and then you randomly draw a card out of a deck. And then based on the suit, you have to design a type of business. And then the DM gets these in their pot of DM tools that they can swirl around and pull out in a later session. So that it's not on the DM three weeks from now, then when you go to town and go, oh, I need to buy a gold ring, Who, where, where would I go? They can go, oh, remember six weeks ago, Sean made up that goldsmith who was a gnome who was actually a dragon in disguise or whatever the heck it happened to be. Um, there are games designed to do this. Uh, Microscope and Kingdom are the two that come to mind, but there are others. Um, another example is I could totally see using For the Queen as a development could just be to find out what happens between two kingdoms, what's the end result, or to develop characters in the royal court of your whatever say. It doesn't have to be For the Queen. There's enough variants out there you can play. You could just deep dive a game like that. Um, one that I know Sean is a fan of is building your base, build your hero's lair, build your thieves' guild. Um for people who are into kingdoms and owning land, do the finances. Like there's often some math that happens in the background that you don't really want to interrupt your main game for, but is worth doing. Absolutely. I I at one point developed an entire casino for my rogue in Warhammer. 
uh, and we worked out the finances for it. So I knew that if a month went by, this is, you know, this is the finances for the, uh, for the casino. If I ever actually managed to get back there to, to collect. And if I remember the odds weren't always in your favor, there was a chance you could lose money. Oh yeah, absolutely. There were rolls yeah. for it and everything. Now, other things you could do for that, uh, world building and that's more um, close to heart, more player focused. Is you got players do these kind of things for their characters. Uh, what's the name of your sword? What's um, more background information? Um, look at your things like your keywords, your inspirations, your... Um, uh, my brain today is just like <laughs> missing all the little words. The fate thing, whatever, the aspects. Uh, look at your aspects. See if there's things you want to tweak about your character. Maybe you do some character building. Or character planning. Speaking of Sean and Warhammer, Sean's one of those people who would plan his character out 12 careers ahead of time. Those can also be valid things you can do that still let you interact with your game, but not play it. There's also some some great things, especially when you're getting into modern games. So again, I'm going to talk about masks here because it's what I know best. But when you start a game of masks, part of the creation of your character and your team is a set of questions. Well, if there are other questions that are available to be asked, so if not everyone has played, you know, if certain character classes, uh, playbooks haven't been played, there are other questions that could be asked to players mm -hmm. about, you know, the first time you had a, you had, you, you all got together and, and had an adventure. Uh, but you can also come up with other questions. You can have the team or the team that's available develop more about their character's backstory simply mm -hmm. by going through question and answers and let the let the players who are there play off each other and enhance relationships or or cause you know trouble throw in new npcs that's one of the fantastic things about these you know player forward narrative driven improv games where the players are supposed to be doing a lot of this anyway so use that opportunity mm -hmm ask them questions and and find out and develop things you can even get them to whether they know it or not develop all the villains that you're going to be playing for the next mm -hmm. month because they will develop a few you know uh antagonists that they met earlier in their lives before the team formed uh there's so much potential there just sitting around mm -hmm. shooting the shoot uh asking questions about characters and honestly, there are a ton of online tools for this. Questions to ask your character. Um, I can't remember. Might have been Alien. One of the RPG box sets I reviewed recently had like 100 questions to ask your character before you started playing. And I read that and I went, there is no way I'd want to do this in Session Zero. Because for me, I'm one of those players where my characters will develop as I play. Absolutely. Just give me a set of numbers. I don't know who my parents are yet. But if you're we're playing and you come up, come to me in the middle of it and you go, blah, 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 tell me about your dad, I'll have it. But I, I am not one of those people who comes up with all that ahead of time. But there are these questions. And I, I sorry, I can't remember which game it was I reviewed. It was something we reviewed that had one of these like hundred questions to ask yourself before you start playing your character. And there are tons of these character surveys that you can find online. Well, and world no. building too. I mean, there are yes. some books out there about world building where as the DM, you might go ahead and redo all this stuff but it's just as easy to ask these questions that you could be asking yourself to your players mm -hmm. and again involve them in the creation of the world but here's a tip that um you can do for all of these suggestions is rotate roles for a week so normally i run warhammer third edition we play my game we play our thing how about this week you know what sean's not going to be here so you know what deanna why don't you run the game for the rest of us and then you can use our other suggestions, right? Play a side quest, play a different story, play different heroes, but just give the DM a break for a week, which is another way you can help prevent burnout, which DM burnout is definitely a thing, and give someone else a chance to take on that role without the responsibility of running a campaign and having to run the regular game for people. Just a way to experiment without, with someone else running the game for a little while. Heck, you could even pick someone who's never read the rule book and kind of walk them through what to do. Like, what kind of adventures would you like to see? Which leads to my next suggestion, session, whatever you want to call it. Mid-session, zero, session, mid, I, I don't know. The, the, so far, no one's come up with a good name for this that I've heard. Unfortunately, I'm not coming up with any. But revisit things like your social contract, your lines and veils, your safety tools, where your campaign's going, the obligation. 
make sure everyone still has enthusiastic consent and buy-in. This is a great chance to sit down. Now note there's going to be a player missing, right? So that's, you may, that that's the one issue with doing this while there's a player missing, but it's still worth talking about all this stuff and just getting a, another, even just a quick reconfirmation. Everyone's still in, everyone's still having fun. Do a quick, um, um, with the thorns and roses, right? What, what would you like to see more of? What did you like in the last couple of sessions? What didn't you like? And use that to drive your game going forward. Now, because a player is missing, don't make a huge, massive decision. Don't suddenly decide to, like here, you add new lines and veils. You don't take them away without everyone there. Adding them is not going to hurt the player who's not there. Don't end the campaign. Don't decide to start playing something else with someone missing. But little things, right? Like, how's it been going? What do you want to see more of? Uh, when I ran 4th edition D&D, one of the things in that game, yes, I know people sometimes hate this, there were magic item wish lists. So I would have everyone update their magic item wish list. So like, you know what? You know, Sean's not going to be here this week. And I was actually thinking of Sean, the other Sean, but um, because he played in that. Um, we're going to sit down and we're going to update our wish list. Then we're going to double check our math, which was a thing in D&D. We're going to go through and make sure all our skills are at the right level and make sure all our bonuses and double check to make sure our AC is right. We're going to do all of that. And then we're going to play a quick game of Red Dragon Inn and we're going to call it a night this week. But that way, when we come back next week, at least all of you will be, you know, know your characters are up to date and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, you do definitely need to think about which direction you're going with this with a player missing. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, uh, Roses and Thorns or star, uh, Stars and Wishes are mm -hmm. definitely something to get out there. Just make sure that you throw it out to that other player so that sometime during the week, they can add their mm -hmm. own Stars and Wishes in there as well and and you know help fill things out it's it's great for the team to do it but you don't want again you don't want to punish so give them a chance to uh to, to get their input get their input yeah. in so this is kind of the next level tip all right so it, this is again it's it's being proactive it's if you know absenteeism is going to be a problem Whatever the reason may be. Again, we're not judging on why people are missing, but we know people are going to miss, possibly regularly, possibly often, maybe predictably, maybe not. Take that into account when you're picking what to play. When you're doing, uh, again, and I'm not going to get into all these tools we're mentioning, but like when you're doing cats, that should be part of the description of what are we looking for in our place? What kind of game do we want to play? Some games are designed so the players can drop in and out. Um, one of the popular ones right now is what people call a West Marches campaign in Dungeons and Dragons, where you have a hex map, you're exploring the hex map, and every session ends back at the tavern. So you're going to go out, you're going to do something, you're going to come back to the tavern every session, and that way people can come and go. And a well-run West Marches campaign, I think, sounds amazing, and I wish I'd heard of this concept back in the day, because most people run it as an open-world sandbox with multiple groups running with different characters and affecting the overall world so that the, the DMs are all in contact with each other and making, you know, the updates on the map and noting, oh, that cavern's been evacuated. Oh, the ogre from here actually escaped, and he now moved up into the forest up here and making it a very living world. But the big appeal of these games are is you can join any group with any GM anytime and you don't have to come back. And the more often you play, the more you level up, the more stuff you do. But that's on you because it doesn't matter because you're not part of a coherent group that always does the same thing together every time. Though you could have a group that plays this way. But the idea, the theory of the West March is that you definitely don't have that. And in a way, discourages having the same groups playing together all the time. Now, even in games where it does matter who's there, you can change the style of play. Like I ran AD&D second edition for almost 10 years, sort of West Marches, but what it was, was my group were mercenaries. And whoever showed up that day got the mission and went and did whatever the mission was. Now I will admit, I wasn't really good at getting everyone back to town every time. So sometimes the group would change in the middle, but we always just assume something came up, right? Like you're mercenaries. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're sitting there trying to... Um, help some young kid defeat an evil empire. And then all of a sudden the crime boss comes in trying to settle his debt. Right. And you don't show up for a couple of weeks. And then the next time the party finds you, you're stuck in carbonite to stick with today's theme. Um, another example of this is of, of games that work good for this is honestly, and I've never run it. So yes, bad gamer cred shadow run. I am still fascinated that a game has been around this long that has such structured play because every Shadowrun session, if run by the books, is a run. 
It starts with meeting Mr. Johnson, who gives you a job. It groups miss like people from all over the place together to do that job. You then do the run. Then you report back to Mr. Johnson. You get paid. In the middle, it was where all the fun happens. But there is no reason you need to run with the same group every week in Shadowrun based on the premise of the game. And that's the premise of the game, not just how people run it. What I find odd is the number of people who run Shadowrun as a D&D campaign with the same group every week and everyone trying to fold the right roles. To me, that's not the fun to have in Shadowrun. To me, the fun is you're with this group this week and too bad because you're not getting paid unless you work together. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can absolutely see. I remember back in the days when we were playing Cyberpunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, hey, I need a solo and I need a, uh, you know, so a net runner. Uh, and then we need some other people. But, you know, I don't really care who they are. As long as we can, you know, put a team on and, and get something going, mm -hmm. let's do it. You know, you don't have to be the heroes who are, you yep. know, you're, you're just a bunch of people who are going out there and, and getting things done. Another example is anything where you're working in the military, you can do this, uh, which includes Star Trek, because you get missions from Starfleet, as well as um, uh, your um, cop stories, right? Your, 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 you know, you've got a boss, the, 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 the sergeant. Yeah, 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 police procedurals. I was trying to see, like I said, I'm, I'm missing all the, they're, they're coming to me, but they're not there at the top of my tongue tonight. But yeah, your procedurals. So my last suggestion, as far as what you can do is to specifically have a backup game. So pre-plan this. And this is, if you know, you're going to miss people, know what you're doing. When we have seven players, we play this. When we have Three players, we play this. Now, again, my problem I've had with this is sometimes the backup starts to become more popular than the original. That that can be an issue, but in general, plan ahead of time. So, and I think this is the the overall, I guess, my 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 overall summation of this is be prepared for it and have a plan. And that plan should be done during session zero. Yep. <laughs> everyone you need you need the buy-in in advance and actually this is a really great one if you've got another dm in mm -hmm. your group so swap off you know because dms need breaks too and they're they're the and if they're not there that's a real problem but if you've got multiple dms and i know we've got people in our discord who have this whereas mm -hmm. you know if if the if the right combination of people is there they can run a bunch of different games because yep. they are you know a bunch of them are dms gms whatever you'd like to call it and they all have different games they run so <laughs> who so be it whoever happens to be there the game is going to be running according to that all right and we do have one final suggestion that hasn't come up yet which i still think is also just as valid as the rest so yeah this one for me is is something that especially a lot of these hardcore game groups a lot of these groups who just are are so dedicated which is fantastic but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with the whole group just taking a night off. Mm -hmm. Don't game. Spend some extra time with family. Watch a new show. Catch a movie. You don't have to game every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. There's a whole world out there. Maybe there's a concert. You know, maybe there's a band in town that you like. Mm -hmm. You never even would have known about if you hadn't realized that, oh, this Wednesday I get to do something other than go to Place X and do Game Y. Yeah. Totally agree. No, you could do something other than gaming with that same group of people as well. You sure. don't have to necessarily ditch everyone. Yeah. That can be a great way to get to know your players and the other people you game with all the time in a setting outside, excuse me, a setting outside of gaming. Yeah, doing something else and taking the night off doesn't necessarily mean you have to abandon the friends. It yeah. just means you're not playing the game and you know. No, you're sometimes not having multiple groups of friends is a healthy thing. Very true. You may want to get away from those friends for a little while. Very true. All right, I do have one other thing I want to mention. That while this topic is pretty much directly related to role-playing games and all the questions were role-playing specific, with the growing number of campaign-based games and legacy games out there and scenario games, this can apply just as much to board games nowadays. Now, the big difference here is board games are codified. There are rules and there are systems you have to follow for them to work. It's one of the things that is different. You don't get to improvise as much in your board games and it's going to matter what game it is, what you can do. And I'm not going to get into all the possible things you can do with board games, but a lot of the above applies like playing a different game, but you don't really get to play the same game with different characters doesn't work as well, though it does for some. 
like certain games like Charterstone are designed specifically so players can jump in and out. Battles of Camelot is a game that people can jump in and out while you're playing it. But then other games, you can't be on chapter 17 of Descent Journeys in the Dark and then just suddenly take a character out unless maybe there's a way to like one player can try to multiple characters, which honestly I didn't recommend that above because I've never had that go well. I know some groups think it's okay. It, to me, that's a no, no. So if you want to do that, you can do it. Whereas in a board game, I'd probably be okay with it. But even then I wouldn't want to show up the next week and find out my character died or you, I, you lost my favorite weapon or you went and bought an ax, but I wanted to use spears. Like there's just too many loopholes with that. So it's going to be based on your game, but I just wanted to point out that what we talked about above, though it is an RPG focus, applies just as much to board games. And I know people don't like to admit it, but you should still have your session zero with your board game group as well. Absolutely. So I think that's it for our suggestions on what to do when you're missing a player. We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, Fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or hit me up on social media where I can be found everywhere. It's tabletop, bellhop, one word. And if you use or do any of these suggestions we've got, or if you've got other suggestions that we completely missed <laughs> when you've got MIA players, let us know in the comments, in the yes. uh, social media, wherever. We're interested in how you handle this particular problem. Like if you got the you played someone else's character thing to work, I, I actually kind of want to hear that story. I also kind of want to hear the horror stories. There's something we've never asked for before. We ask for questions, but if people have horror stories, I, I, we could add a whole segment where we read out horror stories. That's been popular on other shows. I'm like, I, I have not ever had it go well, but if it works for you, all the power to you. 